This video is sponsored by Squarespace. This week I tested out all 34 Citadel contrast paints and all 23 Army Painter speed paints. And in this video, we're going to review every single one of them. But before we do that, I would like to quickly present my findings on these paints overall. Both of these lines of paints are marketed as a time-saving device for miniature painters, being an all-in-one base coat and wash. And they both basically do what they say they do. However, each product also has a few major downsides. The AP Speed Paints are a bit cheaper, only $4 per bottle, but they also require a much longer drying time than contrast paints or you risk removing the lower layers by putting on more layers of paint. This is admittedly a pretty big downside, but these paints are also ridiculously cheap. Contrast paints, on the other hand, do not have this issue. The main downside of contrast paints is just how expensive they are, being about $8 per bottle or about twice the price of the AP Speed Paints. They also have some minor coffee staining issues like the Citadel washes have, but honestly it's not a huge issue because you're probably going to be laying other paints on top of these paints when you're painting them. Those are the major upsides and downsides of these two lines of paint, so without further ado, let's get into the review. When preparing for this paint test, I realized I was going to need about 60 miniatures which all looked relatively the same. So I wanted to see if I could find some miniatures which would work well as paint test miniatures but could also be used as game pieces for something after the fact. I considered a few different options but in the end I ended up going with some. I picked these models because if you paint up a ton of them, you basically have an Age of Sigmar army, but also because they feature a variety of different surfaces, both heavily textured areas as well as some smooth planes, so you can see how these paints are going to function over different textured areas. Before I began my paint test, I wanted to make sure I was setting myself up with the best possible primer for using with both of these types of paints. So I did a few test models where I painted half the model with contrast paint and half the model with speed paint to see which priming method performed best overall. The priming tests were black primer with white dry brush over top, gray primer with white dry brush over top, black primer with white overspray from an airbrush, gray primer with white overspray from an airbrush, and finally just white primer by itself. The two top performers were the plain white primer, as well as the black primer with white overspray through an airbrush. And they both work pretty much how you would expect them to. The white spray over black gives us deeper shadows, but a less vibrant result overall. And the plain white primer gives us a more vibrant result overall, but with less depth to the shadows. It was a bit of a hard decision, but for this paint test, I decided to go with just a plain white undercoat. So after spending many, many, many hours assembling lizard men skinks, basing them all, and then finally priming them in white primer, we are ready for our paint test. But before we get on to testing out the main colors, I wanted to select a single color for the bases of the figures and also for all of the accessories that the skinks are carrying to help unify the rainbow scheme of the army. And for this, I wanted to go with a bone or pale sand type color to match the key art that we're basing this army on. So the first paint we're going to test out for these details and the bases is Army Painter Pallid Bone versus Citadel Contrast Skeleton Horde. After giving these paints some time to dry, we can see that they are basically identical. However, I found that for this process, I slightly preferred the Citadel Contrast Skeleton Horde because of the paint pot design. While Citadel paint pots do have their flaws, when doing a huge batch of models like this, I really appreciated not having to constantly make sure the paint on my palette was still wet and usable. Instead, I preferred to just paint straight out of the paint pot, but again, your results may vary. This is really more of a preference thing. It took me about four hours to completely paint all 70 of these skink bases, as well as any bone details on their figures. And after this, we are finally ready to test out the main colors in the range. Now, for the rest of this video, I'm just going to be going through every color in very deep detail, showing you what the paints look like compared to their equivalents in the opposite paint range. But if you'd like to just have one big reference document that shows you what every paint looks like next to its equivalents, I recommend you go and check out my website at howlcorp.com colors. 
I was able to slap this page together relatively quickly with no coding or technical knowledge required using this video's sponsor, Squarespace. I just took photos of all the models, clicked upload to the website, and then using one of their templates, the images were magically aligned to look good on a variety of different screens. I've been enjoying slowly building my own website over the past few months using Squarespace, and if you'd like to make one of your own for less than the cost of a monthly Netflix subscription, why not check out squarespace.com slash Dana Howell for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the code Dana Howell at checkout to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. With our ad placement complete, let's get into comparing all the different colors in these two paint ranges. Starting with the two yellow colors, Iandan Yellow and Zealot Yellow. I like both of these paints quite a bit, and the only real difference is the hue of the paint, with the contrast version being a bit more of a true yellow and the Zealot Yellow skewing more towards an orange yellow. Speaking of orange, we have two main orange colors, one in each range. For contrast, we have Griff Hound Orange, and for AP Speed Paints, we have Fire Giant Orange. Once again, both of these paints work great. I have no problem with either of them, with the real difference just being that the speed paint version is a bit more saturated and the contrast version is a little bit more of a desaturated orange color. After this we have four total red colors. Two warm reds, one in each range, and two cool reds, one in each of the ranges. The two warm reds are virtually identical, with the only real difference being how the paints tend to dry on the surface. And this is probably the best example of the difference between how these two paints dry. You can see here that the contrast version has deeper shadows, but also more of that coffee staining type effect that's so common to Citadel shades and washes. The cool reds are a bit more different from one another, with the contrast version again being a bit darker in tone, but also being slightly different in hue. The contrast version is a little bit warmer, and the Army Painter version is a little bit cooler, being almost magenta-like. And speaking of magenta, we have two magenta colors, one in each range. As I pretty much always say with any magenta paints, I wish these were a little bit more saturated, a little bit brighter, but I still like the AP Speed Paint version quite a lot, and I think it performs pretty well for what it is. The contrast version, however, is honestly pretty bad, and I don't like it at all. It has a real chalky feel to it, and I don't like how it dries on the model. This trend continues into some of the purple paints, with almost all the purple paints having some kind of chalkiness or pigment issue. The first of these is Magos Purple, a contrast paint which is pretty unique, and one of my favorite of these purples. It's very light and goes on like a wash, and I could see using this for a lot of different niche purposes when painting. The other contrast purple, Shyish Purple, is much darker and a bit of a pain to apply to the models. Once it's dry, it is kind of an interesting color, like a desaturated purple color, but you can see it's quite uneven with a lot of coffee staining effects. Meanwhile, the AP Speed Paint version Hive Purple is just just as chalky, just as hard to apply, but dries even worse, and has a kind of glossy finish to it that I really don't like. I don't really fault the manufacturers for either of these because I hear it's quite difficult to make a purple paint, something to do with the pigments, so not a huge deal. If you're looking for a good purple wash, I would either recommend mixing your favorite magenta with your favorite cyan or blue color, or just using Drukey Eye Violet, which is one of the Citadel shades. Moving on to the blues, some of the best paints in both of these lines are the two main bright blue colors, Talisar Blue and Magic Blue. Both of these perform pretty similarly and are almost the same in terms of hue. Uh, I highly recommend both of these, I really like using both of them. With the only real difference, again, being how they dry on the model. The other blues are kind of a mixed bag, with contrast Leviadon Blue maybe being the worst of all of these blues. Again, I think this has something to do with pigments, as the more violet a pigment is, it tends to be more chalky. This honestly seems a bit more like a Brent from Goobertown Hobbies kind of question, so go and comment on his videos for me and ask him what the deal is with purple pigments. The contrast ultramarine blue, however, performed much better here than it did over a Zenithal undercoat in my first AP Speed Paints test video. 
However, it is still Cloudburst Blue, the AP speed paint that falls somewhere in hue between Leviathan and Ultramarine that I like the most out of all of these dark blues because it has the most contrast between its shadows and highlights. Finally, we have High Lord Blue, the final AP speed paint blue paint that isn't really bad per se, but I also feel it just isn't different enough from AP Magic Blue to warrant a different paint color. I would have preferred this paint slot be given to a turquoise instead, because speaking of turquoise, the contrast line has two very different and both very good turquoise colors, which are some of my favorites in the contrast range. Meanwhile, the AP Speed Paint range has no turquoise colors, which personally makes me very sad. They do, however, have a pretty good cyan color, Plasmatic Bolt, which is roughly the equivalent of the contrast paint Aethermatic Blue. The differences between these two paints are that the contrast Aethermatic Blue is a little bit lighter and more of a true cyan color, whereas I believe the AP Speed Paint Plasmatic Bolt is just a little bit more green, contains a little bit more of that yellow pigment. However, both of these paints are really great and I could see using them for special effects. Uh, glowy things or night haunt. Next up we have our green paints and both of these ranges contain quite a few green paints. So let's start with the most saturated ones and work our way down to the desaturated paints. The basic most saturated green for each range, much like the reds and blues, are pretty much identical and work great with the only real difference being a slight variance in hue and the way the paint finishes. Both of these paint lines also have a standard dark forest green, and I have to say I do prefer the AP Speed Paints version in this case, for the same reason I prefer Cloudburst Blue over Ultramarine Blue. There's just more contrast between the highlights and shadows. The contrast range also has a sort of mid-tone green, which falls between the light and dark greens, and I actually like it quite a bit. It's called Orc Flesh, not to be confused with the AP Speed Paint Orc Skin, and it's just a nice, <laughs> it's just a nice green paint. I like it. Finally, we have our three desaturated green colors, which are all slightly different in hue, and I like them all quite a bit. No real comments here. They're all just nice, desaturated, natural looking green colors. Each paint line also has a desaturated yellow green color, also known as the Nurgle color. Uh, each of these are slightly different, and both of them are some of my favorites in both of these paint ranges. Highly recommend. With our highly saturated bright colors out of the way, let's move on to our more desaturated neutral tones, which make up the rest of both ranges. And to start these out, we're gonna start with all the different desaturated yellow colors. I don't have a lot to say about these colors other than I think that they are all pretty great. I didn't have any issues with most of these paints. The contrast paint Agaros Dunes, I think is just a little bit si too similar to the contrast paint Skeleton Horde. I don't really know why there's two of these, but otherwise each of these paints is a different color and I could see being useful in its own way. Next up, we have our desaturated orange colors, some of which perform better than others. But first of all, before we evaluate these colors, can I just say that I think it's a little bit messed up? Only the four lightest colors in this range have the word skin in them. With anything darker than that just being named after leather, wood, or beasts. Most of these paints are pretty good. They're all different in color. The only real issues I had was that the darker these colors get, the less contrast we get between the highlights and shadows, which is a bit of an issue in general in both paint lines, especially the contrast line. Finally, we have all of the blacks, grays, and whites in the range. For our black paints, we have one of each, one for each range, and both of them I found work pretty well. I tend to slightly prefer the AP Speed Paints one in this case as it dries a bit more matte and has a bit more of an even finish, but it's not a huge difference. I like both of the black paints in these ranges. We also have two white paints, one from each range, and I think I highly prefer Apothecary White from the Contrast range to Holy White from the AP Speed Paints range. 
I will say that for these paints, you do need to shake both of them up quite a bit to get them to work properly. But uh, yeah, in general, I really did like Apothecary White and I think it's an interesting way of achieving um, a pure white painted model. Finally, let's talk about grays. To start off, we have two neutral gray colors with both work pretty well. They're just slightly different in hue. The contrast paint is a little bit warmer than the speed paints ones. And I do like both of these. I could see myself using both of these paints. On top of this, we also have our two Space Wolf gray colors, which are uh, for non Warhammer players, a desaturated blue color. Again, I like both of these quite a lot. They are just slightly different in hue. So uh, you can see the difference quite easily when you compare both of them. And last of all, we have Griff Hound Gray, a contrast exclusive color, which appears to be a desaturated gray green color. I really like it. I don't know why. I think it's a good color and I kind of want to use it for something. Final conclusions. I think both of these paint lines are great and I can see myself using both of these paint sets for years to come. However, I find the marketing behind these two paint lines is deceiving as they both have very different uses. Contrast paints can be used for pretty much anything. They make a great base coat, a great wash. You can use them through an airbrush. You can paint on top of them. They're just a great all round paint. However, they are a little bit expensive and that's the major downside for contrast paints. AP speed paints, on the other hand, are very different than contrast paints, and they have a very specific use case. They basically only mix well with each other, and they can have issues if you try to apply acrylics on top of them really quickly. I'm working on another video right now where I go much more in depth on how I use speed paints to paint in a hyper matte watercolor type style. But the best comparison that I can think of is that AP speed paints work similar to oil paints. They take a very long time to dry, but because of this, you can blend with them for quite a long time if you're careful. When painting with these, you need to just be okay with the fact that they're going to blend together and use it to your advantage, or you need to be okay with waiting a very long time for them to dry before applying other paints on top of them. For this reason, I am sad to admit that I would not recommend AP Speed Paints for beginner painters, like I would contrast paints. With the only exception to this advice being if you want to do what I I did here with this lizard men army by just applying a single coat of AP speed paints to each area and following that up with a pale sand dry brush and calling it done. Which personally, not a bad way to speed paint an army. It's uh, quite a bit of fun, quite relaxing. But these aren't the kind of paints you're going to want to go to if you want to apply all kinds of effects and other things on top of them afterwards. So in conclusion, if you're looking for a paint that's an all-in-one wash, quick speed paint type thing, I would probably recommend contrast paints for most people if you don't mind the price. However, if you are on a budget and you're okay with painting in one of the ways that I just mentioned for the AP speed paints, I would still recommend them. I've been having a lot of fun with them personally, but they're not perfect. That's what you get for half the price. As always, thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much to all of our lovely patrons for supporting this channel. And this week, I'd especially like to thank Peter Ilsley for your generous donation to our Patreon. And I will see you all in the next video.